We know that she is multifaceted. Anybody who has attended the Christmas concert. We know that she's multi-talented. We know that as a practitioner, and even before she was a practitioner, she's walking life's path with grace and diligence. And as if all of that weren't enough, she's some serious eye candy. Please help me welcome Sandra Cooper, who will bring us our message. I just whispered in her ear, it takes one to know one. <laughs> and we always are truly looking at ourselves, aren't we? Good morning, everyone. It is a joy for me to bring the message this morning and to welcome everyone who is joining us on our World Wide Web. So I say a hearty Jamaican morning. A few, a few months ago, I took my car to that little place opposite Sovereign Center to be serviced. And while I was waiting to pay my bill, two mechanics standing nearby got into what I thought was a very loud and heated argument. As it was happening very close to me, I decided to take up my fast self and intervene. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I said, take it easy now. It sounds bad, you know. Well, one turned to me and said, don't worry, miss. I know nothing. I saw we stay. The other man quickly re reinforced his colleague's position. Yes, miss. I just saw we stay. Well, after they had wandered off, I caught myself chewing on the idea of I saw we stay. It's a popular Jamaican expression that points to a way of being. That is how we are. It sounds better to say I saw we stay, don't it? And I, I ask myself if it is taken for granted that aggressiveness and quarrelsomeness are normal because a so we stay. And won't these qualities affect our ability to thrive as a nation? And if that is how we stay, won't it make a difference to how we are being in 2014 as we seek to achieve the goals we set earlier this month, seen? When we say, a so we stay, what constitutes this so? Is it all a we that stay so? How long do we stay so? Can we change how we stay? Or is there a part of how we stay that is finite and immutable? All these questions become fodder for my reasoning or became fodder for my reasoning around my message this morning, which I've entitled, A How We Stay, How We Really, Really Stay. When you meet someone for the first time, whether for, um, or whether it's the first time or you know, someone that you know for a period of time, it is natural for us to assess and evaluate them according to how they look, what they are wearing, how they are behaving, their position, gender, sexual orientation, religion, social class, education, etc., etc. As a people, those of us who have been born and bred Jamaican have been so praised and condemned at the same time for some of the qualities and behaviors which constitute our Jamaicanness. On one hand, it is said that we are aggressive, enough, rebellious, defiant, violent, and lazy. On the flip side of that same coin, we're also confident, dignified, resilient, determined, hardworking, and ambitious, among a host of other lofty qualities. What seems clear to me is that no matter what our ethnicity, class, or religion, as Jamaicans, most of us wear this politically and geographically based identity with great pride. And while there are many social and economic issues to be addressed here on, on the rock, which is what we call Jamaica, we can still be proud of the achievements of our homegrown heroes, past and present, our nation builders, athletes, and most recently, our songbird, Tessan Chin, who have all served to fly our flag high. So whether we are writing history, winning world records, sweeping the top prize in another country's national spelling bee or song competition, 
we bloom wherever we, we are planted because a sow is stay. Now, scientists who study human behavior have, <laughs> before I, 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 I say that, there is a, um, I, was, I, I was away with a group of, of colleagues at, um, um, we were away in, in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I was in this store, uh, and it was pre predominantly white community, and it's like a Macy's, and I was just browsing. And just uh, um, across from me, I heard some choice fabric being expressed. Now, I, I'm not one to use such language. Maybe if I butt my toe on the bedpost, but nobody will really hear me. And I tend to frown on people who use such language, because that's how I stay. But here am I in this different space, where there are all these um, predominantly white people, and I hear <laughs> Fabric. Now, those of you on the World Wide Web, we'll have, you'll have to speak with Reverend John when you see him at one of our conferences. But whereas I would normally, in my culture, frown on such expletives, I had to go towards the sound to see where it was coming from. Because I don't know of anyone else in the world that uses such language but a Jamaican. And I felt I needed to connect. One way to connect. So um, when scientists study human behavior, they have identified numerous qualities that drive our actions and contribute to our ability to function normally. And there are qualities like integrity and passion, belief in oneself, belief in a positive outcome, visualization of success, excitement about creating and manifesting possibilities, faith in a higher power, and so on. And these serve to enable an individual to stretch beyond perceived limits and accomplish great things, whatever the nationality. So we are not exclusive. A reporter once asked um, leg legendary boxer Muhammad Ali how many sit-ups he could do. The great boxer said he didn't know. He only started counting when it started hurting. It must have been um, Emerson's understanding of the insatiable inner urges of humanity that prompted him to declare, and I quote, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. End of that quote. Now let's take a quick, quick look at what lies inside. And we don't have the whole morning to, to go into a discord a discourse on um, our psychological makeup. But this stuff inside is what fuel, fuels our inclination to stay a certain way. One of the first things we learn when we come into this teaching is that life is consciousness, and that, that there are two levels of consciousness. There is firstly the conscious mind that actively thinks, is creative, logical, and analytical, which produces ideas and shapes our wishes and desires. Now, because there is a limit to the information that can be held in conscious focal awareness, a storehouse of one's knowledge and prior experience is needed. This is the role of the subconscious or the subjective mind. It stores all of life's previous experiences, beliefs, memories, skills that you have learned, situations you have been through, and the images that you have seen. The subconscious mind is responsible for the auto automatically triggered feelings and emotions that you suddenly experience, like fear, anxiety, and so on, like if you're asked to speak in public. It is the interaction between these two aspects of mind that largely determines our, our experience of life. So then, we can consciously learn a step-by-step -step, um, way of doing something like riding a bicycle or driving a car. And then that programming takes up residence in the subconscious mind. If this were not so, then every time you get behind the wheel of a car, you would have to learn all over again. So some things we do on automatic. Events like, say, coming at the top of your class, a parent leaving the home, your first kiss, 
not being selected for the football team, falling from a mango tree at age five, learning that fire burns, etc., all become memories that are embedded in the subconscious mind, which records that experience and then plays it back at appropriate or sometimes even inappropriate times. The interesting thing is that when we have an experience, the conscious mind gives that experience meaning. So for example, we will say, oh, they didn't pick me for the football team because I'm not good enough. And then we live into that feeling of I'm not good enough. That interpretation then becomes a belief and the reality that we live from. <clears throat> so if one feels that he is not good enough, he may respond by being withdrawn, overly fearful, or in some cases, aggressive and arrogant. Then over time, as we repeat behaviors over and over again, like a, a, a plane on autopilot, we, become, we come to be recognized for them. So we will hear, boy, she freddy freddy, or boy, that man is such a bully. And then we get these labels according to how we are perceived. One particular woman I know always sought to defend and justify her cantankerous and boisterous nature with the retort, I just can't help it. It's some mistake. Well, our old tapes will play over and over again, triggered by people and events. I'll give you two perfect examples. I'd been attending the temple for about 10 years and coming to class and learning about my spiritual magnificence and God within and that stuff. And then I went to a Thanksgiving service for a friend, a friend's father who had passed at St. Richard's Catholic Church. Now, I'd been raised Catholic, and the, the, the person whose father had passed was a part of my graduate class, and my friend Clive Edwards was part of that group, and we sat together at the service. So at the point just before the communion, and those of you who are also um, recovering Catholics um, will, will recall when we bow our heads, beat up on our chests, and we say, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. Only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Well, I'd hardly said the Lord, I'm not worthy, when I felt an elbow juke me in my side to remind me that that is not who I am, and that is not how I stay. Um, but the, trick, the, the programming of going to church, saying these prayers over and over and over again had just come automatically to me. In the second situation, I was conducting a workshop. Um, and it was a listening exercise that was part of that workshop. And I put people into, into pairs. And you know, people, some people don't want to go first. So I said, the person with the longest hair, you be the listener. And one man said, excuse me, but that's discrimination. And he wasn't joking. And I, I don't remember having, ever having offended anyone in a workshop in that way before. He was serious, his face was, was dark and sullen. So I said, okay. And I changed it up and I did something else. And during the break, I said, tell me a little bit about what happened just now, why you, took, you seem to take offense to me saying the person with the longest hair. And he said, I am one of 11 children. I had five sisters before me and four sisters after me and one little brother. And my sister them used to terrorize me. And you women, and he, he went on and on and on about women. And so I said, how long ago was that? Because this is a man in his early 60s. And he, he said, and it, it seems as if in that moment he got it. That he, had, he was still having feelings around something that had happened in his life from his childhood. And this is how we, we, the, 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 um, situations will occur that trigger some of these old memories and these old ways of being. Okay. So in the, the irony with this man is that he's, he was married um, 32 years to the same woman, and they had three daughters. <laughs> now, profound insight reinforced by the teaching of the science of mind tells us that there is more to us than a jumbled soup of old beliefs, memories, experiences, and lessons that can be uh, explained away at the level of biology or the psyche. And while an understanding of the dynamics and workings of the subconscious mind will give us um, 
an understanding about how we stay. We need to realize that our conditioning is not who we are. There is a deeper self, an immortal self, a light that can never be extinguished. It is our divine self, the real, inner, imperishable you. It is a source of your creati creativity, packed with latent possibilities, potentialities, and power. And it behooves us to, be, to reveal it, affirm it, honor it, and love it. Doing so enables us to leave behind the ego's projection of who we think we are, strip away the veil of erroneous thinking, fear, lack, and limitation in mind and body and affairs, and discover how we really, really stay. Made in the image and likeness of a loving God, perfect, whole, and complete. Jesus, a master teacher, spoke to this perfection when he said in Matthew 5, verse 48, be ye therefore perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. End of that scripture. In his book, This Thing Called You, Science of Mind founder Dr. Ernest Holmes tells us, there is a God power at the center of every man's being, a present that, that knows neither lack, limitation, or fear, sickness, disquiet, nor imperfection. This presence and power is the center of all people and all things. Limiting beliefs from the past may create a wall of mental blocks, cemented together by fear and mixed with the mortar of negative experience. Like clouds that obstruct the mountaintops of vision, thoughts of fear and doubt obstruct the greater view." End of quote. He tells us to be careful to guard your thoughts, not only seeing to it that you keep them free from doubt and fear, accepting only the good, but equally, you should consciously repel every thought which denies that good. We have been gifted this life to thrive and to live it abundantly. You are not made for failure, says Emma Curtis Hopkins. No matter who you are or how much you know, nor what anybody has told you, God, the absolute good, is your nature, your defense, and your prosperity. The right action of mind is to stand firmly in the truth, and stand firmly in the truth we must if we are to move away from old patterns of behavior and fully embrace our divinity. Consider the following as some practical things you can do to, to create some new patterns. And this is where we can now refer to the back of the program and take notes. Uh, uh, and I know that we hear these things every time coming from this platform, because I'm going to say some of the same things. But one of the things that makes us have new habits is repetition. We need to hear certain things over and over again. And the first thing that I will urge you to do is to make a sound spiritual practice a habit. By the way, I must com commend, I think most of you were, were here at the beginning of the service. So I'd like to acknowledge you for that. One of, one, of the, one of the challenges we talk about is um, some folks coming in a little bit tardy in, on a Sunday morning, but it's, it's really good to see an almost full sanctuary this morning. And so the spiritual practice has a number of things. And building a good spiritual practice helps to strengthen the inner muscles and develop our trust and our faith. Every prayer that we whisper, every affirmation that comes to our lips makes a difference. I always use the analogy of a glass of dirty water, one drop at a time. It may not change it at first, but if you keep that drop of water going into that glass over and over again over time, it is bound to make a difference. It matters not that there could be a deep-seated belief in luck, and I have lived it, I have experienced it in spite of the number of years in this space. From time to time, I manifest anxiety over luck. And so the work is constant. It never stops. We never reach. And so we can grow in consciousness one prayer at a time, one affirmation at a time. Question, why do you come to the center? Why do you come? Why? Why are you here? Is it just to, is it part of the conditioning of, I go to church on a Sunday morning? Or are we here to drink from that wonderful fountain of, of truth? 
you know, to, to really be purposeful in being part of, of this experience. You know, Reverend John always gives an assignment, and I can guarantee that if you undertake these assignments with great diligence, you are sure to reveal more of that real self, more of how you really, really stay. Make a further commitment to register for one of our Science of Mind classes being conducted here at the temple. And you can begin this Tuesday. We have a foundations class at, that has just started. And it's not too late to participate. Right, Reverend Ann? I think I saw Reverend Ann over there somewhere. I can guarantee that if you make the effort to have regular attendance on a Sunday morning service or come to class or to the spiritual enrichment service on a Tuesday, uh, and to use affirmative prayers over and over again, we will be strong spiritually. And we can stand with confidence, embrace life fully, speaking, listening, caring, doing, being, and loving powerfully and passionately. And speaking of habits, habits are those routine unconscious patterns of behavior acquired through frequent repetition. And we often don't even realize that we are doing them. And we can't change a habit by saying, I'm not going to do something. If I were to say, because the brain cannot not do something. If I were to say to you, please try not to think about Tessan Chin. <laughs> Don't think about it. Don't think about any of the um, shows that you saw. Don't think of any of the songs that she sung. What are you thinking now about? <laughs> there you go. As you focus on not doing something, your mind actually pictures it more clearly. It is impossible not to think about doing something without focusing on it. And it's exactly the same with trying to break bad habits through denial. The solution, choose a positive, healthy habit, one that replaces and supersedes the unhealthy actions, and do it for 30 days in a row. And it will become a habit. So for example, if, if, if you have uh, an addiction to chocolate, develop an addiction to apples. In other words, change the, change, um, the practice into something else that, that you can develop a habit around. And the more you focus and act on the positive behavior, the more it becomes habitual. And the closer you get to change the old way that we stay and how we really, really stay will become manifest. Meditation. Another way in which we grow in consciousness and experience our wholeness and divinity. Meditation silences the chatter of our minds, and in that silence, spirit whispers. It also promotes relaxation and creates the path to a higher state of consciousness. It, it, in that space of consciousness, connectedness, and oneness, we are comforted in the knowing that all power is with God, not from any experience from the past. Another way to change the old program is, pro programming is to practice being consciously present. When the conscious mind is engaged in thought, in other words, when you're thinking about something that went before or something that's to come, you, we are not being present. And, it, and, this, and so when we are thinking, the subconscious mind trips in. We then act or react by default. Consider any one of the goals that you have set for 2014. And I'd like to suggest that having set the goal, because a goal is a future, um, it's an expectation of something to happen in the future. Create an action plan around that goal and then come back to the present. So we can go to plan the future, but come back present. Tend to the now. Do what you have to do regarding that goal, but do it in the now. Once you allow the mind to drift, to how last year's goals didn't materialize, or where will the money come from to make something happen? Your energy and passion dissipates, and the dream gets deferred until next year or maybe the year after that. Placing energy and focus on the present moment helps override the old tapes and create new beliefs that are in alignment with our highest good. Be vigilant in your thinking and in your speaking about conditions or circumstances. That's another thing you can do. Whether it's a colleague's behavior, the state of your finances, the economy of a, um, or, or a doctor's diagnosis. The more you share tales of woe and misfortune, the more woe and misfortune you will get. You have to let go of human opinions and conditions so as to see the truth, 
to open your heart and be guided into right action by spirit's urging. Emma Curtis Hopkins urges, and I quote, prepare your mind with certain ideas and they will go before you like a king's guard, moving aside all apparent trials in the way. Your own radiance of mind out of your noble thoughts and ideas goes like a protecting fire before you and eliminates calamities, sickness, and the tongues of seeming enemies. It is the omnipresent spirit going forth to guide you, and you will have life, health, strength, support, defense, clear thinking, wise speech, joyous song, skill in carrying out your principles, beauty of discernment, and great love. All of these, friends, are within you. Characteristics defining how you really, really stay, and they wait for you to call them into being. Harness the power of affirmations. Emma Curtis Hopkins again um, tells us to keep some words of truth running in your mind constantly. Put a, a, a post-it on your bathroom mirror above the, on the, on the um, cup, cupboard in your kitchen, on the dashboard of your car, something that is affirmative and positive. She says, there is healing in the truth. There is power and beautiful prosperity in the truth. It works through us like a fine fire of sweetness. Oh, this woman's language is so beautiful. End of quote. Our words of truth could be in the form of an affirmative statement like, I rise and proclaim my freedom from the limiting beliefs from my past. Would you say that with me? Um, I'll, break it, I'll, I'll break it in two. I rise and proclaim my freedom. I rise and proclaim my freedom. From the limiting beliefs of my past. And here's another. My good is my bountiful, unfailing supply. And if there's someone in your life that you feel challenged by because of how them stay, <laughs> you can call their name and affirm. Um, Mary, oh, no, not our Mary. <laughs> I behold you with eyes of love and I glory in your perfection. Let's turn to each other and just say to the person, I behold you with eyes of love and I glory in your perfection. I behold you with eyes of love and I glory in your perfection. That is one you should write down. I behold you with eyes of love and I glory in your perfection. I bet you, because I have done this with a family member and, and this person is, is well, she, she's now mellow when, when she, she's engaging with me. I don't know about the rest of the family but it's, it's wonderful. Emma says, who told you that anyone could have a mean, wicked nature? Not Jesus. He said that all came forth from God. Stand firmly to the principle that all are strong, that all are well, and you will see the true nature come smiling up. End of quote. The power of truth enables us to do all things through the motivating power of the Christ within that truly strengthens us. From that higher consciousness, we experience oneness with God, fully expressing the greatness of a heart that is full of love, a mind that expresses a wisdom beyond human knowledge, and a will that spontaneously gives of its energies to securing peace, happiness, light, and strength for all. This is the way to honor the image of God in ourselves and to demonstrate with power, passion, and purpose how we really, really stay. I'm going to close with a wonderful affirmative prayer that um, came out of Dr. Ernest Holmes' um, book, This Thing Called You. And I'm going to ask to have a little music while I, I read this affirmative prayer. And I'm just going to ask that you close your eyes, allow the words to wrap themselves around you, to just permeate every part of your being and just affirm how wonderful, how perfect, how special, how awesome we really, really stay. 
today, I, I uncover the perfection within me. In its fullness, I reveal the indwelling kingdom. I look out upon the world of my affairs, knowing that the spirit within me makes my way both immediate and easy. I know there is nothing in me that could possibly obstruct or withhold the divine circuit of life and love which good is. My word dissolves every negative thought or impulse that could throw a shadow over my perfection. I no longer judge according to appearances, but by principle. Having placed my reliance in the power, the presence, and the perfection of God, I know what I need to know. I do what I ought to do. Whatever belongs to me shall come to me, and I am grateful. I feel the warmth and color of God's presence forevermore pressing against me, forevermore welling up from within me, the wellspring of eternal being, present as who I am, yesterday, today, tomorrow, and always. My friends, I know that you know how you really, really stay. Perfect, whole, and complete. I love you. Namaste.